Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, there's been a great deal of relatively high amount of unanimity from all of you in terms of um, what sort of approach we should be taking. Is it is it fair to say, and uh, for each of you, that there is an enormous difference in relative risk uh, regarding escalation between something that would be retaliation for bad North Korean behavior versus something that would be preemptive? Um, do you all agree on that point? I, I, I strongly do, yes, sir. I agree um, as well. As well. Do, do you also agree that our, our first priority here in getting this right, especially for the long term, should be having a, a unified strategy with our allies in the region? The worst mistake we could make is to come out of this dance uh, without the, the girl who brung us. And uh, the basis of our long term, uh, long term uh, influence and strong policy in the region is our are our two alliances with uh, Japan and, and North Korea, and we should evaluate all our actions. North Korea. In, excuse me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, sir, brain, along here. brain cells, senior moments. Uh, you, uh, uh, and, and we should evaluate all of our, all of our actions uh, in, in that light. That, that doesn't mean we do everything sure. they, they want to do. It, this, is a, this is a give and take alliance, but over the long term, we want to come out of this with stronger alliances than we went in. Agreed. I agree, the current South Korean government um, uh, it has uh, elements within it that are um, uh, a little too hopeful about the prospects for sure. diplomacy with North Korea. So as Admiral Blair said, we, we don't have to do exactly what our allies say, but we have to get it right, uh, not only because we want to come out of this with strong alliances, but our leverage vis-a-vis -vis North Korea or other actors like China uh, depends uh, to a very large degree on how solid they see our alliance relationships. I'd agree that uh, alliances are central to a successful American strategy in the Pacific, so absolutely. Would we be in a better position to create that sort of uh, unified strategy with our allies if we had uh, a sitting ambassador to South Korea right now? We would, uh, uh, not only because of the necessity of clarifying signals from Washington to Seoul, but because an ambassador in Seoul could play a critical role with our ambassador, our very excellent ambassador in Japan, and of course also China in knitting up our allies and other players. A lot of the diplomacy happens out there, and we have a, a, you know, a missing piece in the puzzle. Obviously, one of the things we want to do is send that message of steadiness and clarity to our allies, but also to North Korea. Um, when you see things like the recent tweet from the, the president about a much bigger and more powerful nuclear button, obviously that was uh, designed to be heard by the North Korean regime. But what does it send in regards to a message like how do our allies in the region, um, what do they think when they see that kind of action coming out of the White House? Uh, Senator, I don't think things like that have that that big an effect on our on our uh, allies they uh, they uh, look uh, at what we uh, at what we do at sustained uh, official long term uh, policies and i'd say they are less uh, they are less uh, obsessed with tweets than uh, others are i think our allies are discounting the tweets um, in one sense that's good in another sense it's not good because you want the bully pulpit to have some, some weight. But in general, I don't mm -hmm. think it's, um, it's the problem. I think the problem with our alliances right now is that the talk of a bloody nose or preventive war is focusing allies who should be working with us on pressuring North Korea on finding ways to slow us down. And we want to redirect them on the real problem. I guess I disagree somewhat. I think that uh, our allies are looking at the disconnect between the White, what the White House says and what our cabinet officials say. And so I do think that when they see uh, a delta there that they do have a lot of confusion about what our long-term sort of intentions are. So I guess I would disagree. I, I agree that our alliances are durable, and certainly tweets aren't going to make the the ultimate difference. But I, I do think that they are having an impact in terms of how the how our allies perceive our policy. To to finish up, I want to return to to the Russian issue that uh, Senator Perdue brought up. There's been a lot of reporting about. Uh, North Korea, uh, effectively, Russia's ports becoming a transshipping hub for North Korean coal. Uh, there's been a lot of reporting about oil moving into North Korea from Russia and dropping the, the price of fuel oil. They seem to be an enormous economic release valve. That all comes at the same time that the Congress voted 517 to 5 
to give more sanctions tools to the administration to deal with Russia, and yet we don't see a willingness to impose those sanctions. What do you think the Russian administration thinks when they see us choose not to impose those sanctions? Well, I think it sends a signal, and also I think the Russians will exploit any possible opening uh, for themselves. So I think, you know, as a Chinese crackdown, the, the Russians certainly want to move in uh, for business with North Korea. So that's something we have to watch. Um, but uh, separate and distinct from the North Korea piece, I mean, absolutely, if if the Russians do not see us following through on our sanctions, I think that just induces further bad Russian behavior.